Good evening, Grinders. Welcome to episode number nine of the Grinders Challenge. The Grinders Challenge is designed to help you go from being an amateur player to a professional player. And the way that we do that is we go and play a free role. We win the cash in a tournament where we have no investment, except for maybe like a beer and a burger, which you would have gone and bought anyway, so you can wipe that investment out. We go to a free roll, we don't buy in, we win the cash in the tournament, we take that cash and we go to the casino. We play the lowest stakes that are available, we take that cash, we put it on the table, we double it up, we go home. We go back, we double it up, we go home, and then we go back and we double it up and go home again. The structure is designed to make sure that you never take any money out of your personal checking account, your job, your business, or whatever. You start from the bottom and you scale all the way to the top. And it's very easy to do once you get the ball rolling and you do not touch the money. So not touching the money is a very difficult thing and that is going to something be something that I really press on today. There's gonna to be about two or three different topics that I'm gonna uh, go ahead and blow through. One of them is the reasons you don't wanna to touch your money. Number two is being on your best behavior and setting an example, such as myself, right? Um, we'll go ahead and lead into that. So obviously I'm being extremely transparent about this little challenge that I'm doing in this particular race, which is something that you all know who've watched me throughout the years that I never do. I never talk about the money that I make. I only talk about the wins. I don't talk about how much I've lost. That stuff is like, you have to be careful displaying it because people will think that you're bragging, right? But when you're trying to implement something serious, like what something that I'm doing right now, I need to show that transparency. I need to show when I win. I need to show when I lose. I need to show how much I win, how much I lose, and all the details of in between of why everything happened, good or bad. Um, and the reason I have to be transparent is because poker is, uh, there more than likely there's something coming down the pipeline that might be reversing everything that we love near and dear about poker and you're going to be very upset about it so if you want to avoid that and you want to help poker really become more distinguished between gambling and a skill game which everybody's kind of stuck on this pivot like well which one is it really because you can take your money from your day job and go play on a poker table and even though you don't normally lose excuse me you're taking your money out of your checking account and you're going to get sucked out on. Look at me. I mean, I had, last game that I played, episode number eight, I had tremendous buildup in my hands. I really shouldn't have been losing, but that river card redistributed my money to somebody else every time. That's out of my control at that point. That's why gambling is still a factor in this game. So let's jump right into this. Um, I got this article from pokernews.com. I'll pull it up on the screen. Uh, the owner agrees to plea bargain in 2022 Texas poker room raid case. You scroll down, it says 17 months uh, after authorities raided the Watuga Social Lounge uh, Poker Club during a $100,000 guaranteed tournament, the card room's owner has reached a plea deal and will avoid jail time, but he's out a significant amount of money from the legal fight. I won't, I'm not going to say his name. You can find it on the article uh, who issued a statement of, to poker news following the plea deal was charged in October, 2022 with one count of engaging in organized crime and a separate account for gambling promotion. Multiple players at the Dallas, Texas poker area poker club were fined and numerous staff members were arrested. It's actually closer to Fort Worth. So the fact that they're calling this a Dallas area, uh, this is another reason why I'm bringing this up. Uh, during the raid, which took place at 7.55 a.m. on October 7th, 2022, authorities seized money, receipts, gambling apparatuses, and the $132,840 prize pool from the $420 main event of the Poker Room's Fall Classic. In April of 2023, Charges and fines were to miss for players involved, but there still wasn't an outcome for the owner and various staff members. The club's owner said that after having spent $195,000 in legal fees for himself and eight staff members, he ran out of money to keep fighting. With that, he chose to give up the fight, take a plea deal on February 29th, and to accept that the state will keep the money. In return, the charges have been dropped and he is no longer at risk of being sent to jail. 
So let's bring that back real quick, right? So basically, this guy has spent $195,000 in legal fees to fight this, right? Who knows what was all in the case? I would imagine he's trying to get the money back from the players who originally bought in so that he could restore his reputation because of the raid. Because game, uh, poker is getting, you know, pretty decent amount of momentum. We have the Texas Card House, and that's throughout the state. And there are a few other lounges and, and card rooms that are open running as social clubs. So they're not taking a rake. So they're using that loophole to where they're not really doing anything illegal at this point that you can't really prosecute them on, right? So not only did he spend 195000 in legal fees just to defend himself and the eight people, they also took the prize pool of $132,840 in cash. So that is three hundred and twenty-seven, dollars almost $328,000 that has been confiscated. I mean, not, not all of it's confiscated, but yeah, $327,000 has been spent uh, showing you as an example that, hey, we will shut you down. So the reason that this is still going on, even after establishing that poker rooms help make this a safer place, Texas is scared of gambling, and they should be. Um, gambling is not good for Texas. Now, you can say that's just my personal opinion, but the stats don't lie. It is what it is. I don't believe that a casino should be here. I will push, I would be fine pushing for Texas to allow poker. If this is done that the way that it's already being done, especially since we have access to casinos just outside of the state and most surrounding areas. So I think there needs to be a separation personally, and the majority of the public is going to be on my side. So you can argue with me about this all that you want to. This is where we are. Maybe things will change, but having a casino just does not help the city as much as you think that it does. You're probably just a degenerate or you want the freedom to do whatever you want to, which you have, but you have to go somewhere else to do it. So let's just skip that part. That's whatever my bias is, is what it is. I also speak for the majority of the state. So let's just go with what I have to say at this point. Okay. So with poker, this is another reason why I got the grinders challenge started. So Showing you that this Watuga room got shut down. They're making an example out of them to like let you know, hey, we're going to start figuring things out around here. Shots fired. We just took $327,000. That's a lot of money. And they stretched it out for almost like a year and a half. So they stretched this dude's out, this money out for like another $195,000. Yeah, they stretched him out too, apparently. So, I mean, he spent more money defending everybody than the amount of money that was even confiscated. So he went over just to prove a point. That's how much he wanted to prove to you that his integrity is still there. He will lose more money than is owed just to keep this going correctly. Because the truth is that us in the poker community do for sure want this to be done correctly. We don't want to go to underground games where it's, it's unsafe and anything goes and debauchery is fun, I guess, in some instances, but that's what the free roll games are for where anything goes and there's no investment. That's like the equivalent to the underground world that's allowed to be on the surface of the public, right? So the grinders, the grinders challenge is more important at this point in time than it's probably ever been. And which is one of the reasons why I'm also pushing to start it because poker players need to be on their best behavior. If you're following this management structure that I didn't technically create in my mind, I, I mean, I did because of my experience, but apparently this type of a challenge already exists. Like I think Chris Ferguson had some, something like that. I didn't even know about that until one of you posted that on my, on my post, you know, a couple months ago. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not a freaking genius, but you know, I, I'm not going to come up with everything that people have never come up with, but this isn't even really about me. I'm just taking credit for trying to push you to do it. Um, if you don't want to start off in a free roll and climb all the way through, we can work something different to where whatever level you're already playing at, you can start entering the grinders challenge at that level. I know some of you that are uh, in, in this conversation with me consistently play 
two, five, uh, you know, one, three and, and things like that. So you don't have to necessarily go all the way to the bottom like I did and go climb all the way to the top, but you do need to install a management structure. So because it's more important that we set an example and show how responsible we are, that next extra step of that, then, you know, at this point in time, I think it's more important that you follow that structure and that management than it is to just start all the way at the bottom, ruin your game and go all the way back up to the top. So what you need to do is take whatever cash you are playing with, go put that in that envelope and give yourself that bankroll and just write it off and keep your day job and don't touch that anymore. And now follow the structure. Now, if you're already playing to five and you're buying in for a thousand dollars at Winstar and uh, all you're doing is buying in with that every time and you're spending whatever extra cash. I mean, I would say you need to go back down to one, two, which sometimes you are anyway, but I mean, I don't want to ruin your game, but this is more important setting this example than anything else, because even the poker players are getting targeted here. It's not just the room, like these poker players, they got fines also. Uh, now, I don't know if things go on the record. You know, there's been a big argument about that too. Like, well, if you actually get caught as a poker player, you don't really get in trouble you get like a classy misdemeanor and it's the equivalent to getting a speeding ticket. Now, I mean, you're just using word salad at the point because I mean, are you correct? Yeah. The, the actual penalty is like super low. It's like literally it's on the verge of being a speeding ticket, same type of repercussions, but the rhetoric on the ticket is different. When you go to an employer or something that's on your on your resume now that's on your that's on your background check so it doesn't say speeding ticket it says what it says and uh i don't care like what the repercussions are the rhetoric is a rhetoric you can twist that and turn that any way you want to so let's to get let's get together let's be responsible and put yourself into the management structure it's better for you anyway. I mean, it sucks to show that you lose. We're all addicted to social media. Nobody wants to show that they've taken a loss, but it's honestly, it's better for story building. Like I can't believe I lost last time. I'm not totally surprised I lost the first time, but I mean, look at my last time I ran this race. I went 38 and zero. That's crazy. I was also like very in tune with poker. I mean, I could, I played for hours. And I could grind that out and wait. I knew when to fold. My discipline was a little bit better. But this isn't really about me on this episode. This episode is to show you that, look, this is coming down the pipeline. It's going to go another step further. There's other things going on in other cities that are being sued for being relaxed on laws. Um, Gambling and marijuana are two laws that have been fairly relaxed. And that's going back the other direction because Texas is like the example of the United States. And if you need to know how important Texas is to the world, just think about it this way. America, the United States of America is the number one country in the entire world. Texas is arguably, arguably the number one state in America. And if you had to pick any city to go live in, in Texas, which one would you pick? I would pick Dallas DFW. Do you understand what that means? This is huge. And Watuga is being made an example. That means that Dallas or DFW, the number one city in the world. Say what you want. New York, LA, Chicago. I mean, Miami. I get it. I get it. I'm just making a point here. Texas is like the number one spot, especially right now with everything crazy going on in this country. Texas, everybody's moving here. It's the biggest growing area. Say what you want. The the eye of the world's on this place. Dallas is like the place to go. Is it more fun in some areas? Some things are more relaxed. I mean, say what you want. But Dallas, DFW, is the eye of the world right now. If you really think about it, that makes you very important. Very important. So if the eye is on you and things are reversing in the other direction, that pipeline has an end result. And that means that other rooms that you're loving going to because you don't have to drive an hour plus to the casino, 
um, in these places or keeping you from going to places you wouldn't normally want to go to, then you need to fight for it. And how else do you fight for it without your words? You show an example that, hey, look, I'm responsible. I don't take money out of my day job. I went to a free roll where I had no investment whatsoever except for buying a beer and a burger, which I was going to do anyway, but it's also happened to have poker there, which is how most of you found a free roll in the first place. You went to a restaurant or a bar that you wanted to go eat at and like, oh, you have poker there? Oh man, I, I don't know if I can go play that, you know? And you had the host ask you, why don't you come play? It's okay. It's free. It's, it's legal. Like, are you sure? Because everybody's scared because everybody just thinks that gambling is legal. But people don't understand that you don't have a buy-in. But free rolls have been around long enough. No, I think the general public like pretty much understands like this is legal. This is safe. It's fun. No one, Nobody's gambling. There's no investment. And if you get first place, you're making money. The problem with the free rolls is that you're splitting the pot three ways almost guaranteed. And you're giving at least 20 of that dollars to the dealer or the host also. So you're, you're chopping that pot four ways. If you're getting first place, you're probably taking home 20, $25, 30. If you're lucky, 40, if you hustle 50, if you're like chip leader. So, I mean, you're not making any money at these things anymore anyway, which is why I trash them. And I'm trying to build that, uh, the bankroll builder tournament where it's like literally $200 every time and you can never chop, but I'm only letting a small group amount of people do this. I don't want everybody to do this. For the main reason is that not everybody can be a grinder and you don't want everybody to be a grinder. A grinder is an assassin. You're like, you are a player that people don't want to play against. It's not fun. It's not social. You're there to make money. You're going to hit and run. You're going to dip and you're going to build your bankroll because you want to climb to those higher stakes. And when you get to those higher stakes, you need to be that type of player anyway, because those higher stakes are freaking sharks. They are sharks. They will chew your ass up. If you try to be nice and social and just like play long and just hang out, make some money and then leave and climb higher, it's not going to work. If you want to climb higher, you got to be a shark. You got to be a savage. You got to be a grinder, a hardcore poker player. So that's my rant. You need, it's more important. I think right now to start, I'm going to keep pressing you on this, but it's more important that you get on a management structure somehow, some way, whether it's this challenge or not. I hope that you join this one because I'll at least coach you. I'm always going to give you good tips. I'm the only one who's going to make a poker vlog where it's mainly me talking and giving you game. Like I have so many topics written out. I skipped my position one again today because this is so important. My plan is to do back and back to back games this weekend too. It's Friday, tomorrow, Saturday. So if I'm able to, I promise I will get to position tomorrow. Now I will say I did. I actually recorded the position, uh, the position episode right before I recorded this one, which I'm recording right now, but it was actually way too advanced and I don't need to be giving you that kind of game yet because it's actually going to affect me. So, uh, it was like a 13 minute segment. I played it back and listened to it. I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> I gave you way too much game. So I'll give that up whenever more of you start participating. Uh, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag down that uh, the intellect and the knowledge on that position down, but it's still going to be good position info. So that's, that's coming up next, I promise. But since this uh, article dropped today, this is the most important thing. This is coming down the pipeline at some point in time. If it wasn't, this article wouldn't drop and they wouldn't be made an example of. The place never reopened. If you want legal poker in Texas, which I advocate for, if done correctly, you have to be responsible. You as a player now, you hold the voice. They already don't penalize you for the most part because they act, they think they treat you like the victim, right? which you are, you are the victim to a company. That's just the way that corporations are, right? If a, if a company uses you and abuses you, then they, they get a class action lawsuit and you get a settlement out of that. So whether you were willing to go play or not, I mean, they can argue that, but you're still a patron at their establishment. So you're still at the mercy of the law, fortunately. Um, and that means that you have the power in your hands to show like, Hey, I want this. This is good. But if you want to convince the general public that this is okay, especially in Texas, 
you need to be responsible. You need to, you need to portray things the way that I'm doing it. Show your wins, show your losses, get a phone and a camera. You don't have to have a fancy setup like I do. And this setup is about to upgrade. I'm getting a studio. So like, you don't need to do something super fancy like I'm doing. Uh, you just need to start at the bottom and climb all the way to the top. If you need some advice on like, okay, I want to do this structure, but I don't want to go play a free roll, which I totally understand. And I've discussed already with some of you, just hit me up again. Let's put you on some, some sort of schedule, help you like put aside some money to play with so you can do this correctly, but you need to do your own thing. If you don't want to put my grinders logo on your stuff and you want to do this your own way, fine, whatever, but I'm going to give you shit about it. I mean, if I'm going to press you and make your life better, all you have to do is support me, wear my logo. In fact, I've got some gear dropping right now. So it's, you know, it's uh, mid-March right now. Is it March 15th? It's mid-March right now. So we're about to go into the warm weather, but I'm selling hoodies with my grinders logo that will match the hats and have a little bit different logo too. Um, because every time you go to the casino, it's always cold as hell on there. So you're going to need a hoodie anyway, bring it with you, wear it over your shirt. Um, so yeah. So this, this sale right now, these, uh, these apparel items are going to be expensive. Now my hats and my hoodies are not going to be cheap except for this one time, literally. So if you want any color that you want for a hoodie, you can have it. If you want whatever size or whatever quantity you want, you can have it. The price is going to be at 50% right now. So the hoodies will be 50 bucks. If that's too steep, let's talk. We can negotiate. Um, I don't mind this first time, but I would encourage, if you want to get multiple products, I'll, I'll come down on the price. But this one time only, it's going to be this cheap and you can get any color you want to, which means when this is a production line, I'm going to have four different ones, two types of grays, a white and a black, and they're all going to match these logos on these hats. The black's going to have the white logo. The white's going to have the gray logo and the gray is going to have the white logo. So that's going to be the styles and I'm not going to switch after that. So your opportunity to get a different color, uh, if you click on the picture on the post, it has a whole bunch of different colors at the bottom, pick any one that you want to, you will forever be the only ones that have the different color hoodie with a logo. That's pretty cool, but that's up to you. Let me know what size you are. Uh, if price is an issue, let's talk. I would rather get you in some gear now because the price is going to go up and it's going to remain that way. Um, my hats are going to be minimum 50 bucks. The hoodies are going to be minimum 100 bucks. Those are type pretty much my typical prices. It's because of the brand itself. Um, this is a higher tier brand. It's a professional brand and it's an upscale brand. It's not a free roll league. It is a bridge. It's a higher thing. It's a very proud thing to be, to be a grinder. And only some of us identify as that. So, and it'll separate you from the rest. So the brand is an expensive brand. Not everybody can be a grinder and I don't want everybody to wear the logo. I want you to be, I wanted to have an identity to it. And I want you to be identified as like, if you're wearing that gear, I know that I've got to really like, I've got to really play against you because you're going to be multiple, multiple layers above the normal player. That's why the price needs to be multiple layers above regular prices. I'm not trying to get into competition with other leagues or whatever and, see you where's the most gear because your brands all over the place. I don't really want anybody to have it. I want like only very specific people to be able to wear this. It's my brand. It is what it is. Uh, I can do what I want. It's my company. I want you to be proud to wear it because I'm going to give you hardcore game. You want to be a hardcore poker player? You wear my shit. That's how it rolls. All right. So that's the end of my rant. Uh, we must set an example, right? Like starting right now. Oh, obviously we have time, but no time to waste. Like let's set an example right now, get on the grinders challenge, create some content, get your phone, put it on a little tripod or whatever you need to do. Film yourself talking about what you go through. It's a, it's a storyline It's start to start to finish. More people will support you than anything. Um, and if you're afraid to support this and like, and comment and get, get involved because you don't want to be exposed or like seem like you're worse than you are, you realize it's like, you know, you don't know as many things as you think you do. Just watch the show and then contact me privately. We can talk all day long about it. I will help anybody who wants to be helped. We can all talk. In fact, you might know some things that I don't. I don't read the poker books because people that read the poker books are like, 
And you can tell that everybody, everybody read that book. They're all following that strategy. Well, now you're a sitting duck to somebody like me because I know that all of y'all are reading the same thing. So my comprehension's up here. So now I'm on top of you and you're going to fight from above because I know what the strategy is. So I'm getting too, I'm getting too deep in the game. You shouldn't be knowing these things about me. But anyway, it's a, it's a good thing to bring up. Like I said, join the grinders challenge, get some gear. Uh, I know things are really expensive right now. We're like on the verge of hitting hyperinflation, but it's another reason why you need to get this going right now. Uh, things are just going to get more expensive if the selection cycle doesn't go correctly. We don't get a reset here. Um, we, I mean, you know, where our value of our dollar is, I mean, things are getting more expensive. Your dollar is just worth less. So you need to work harder. This is the best part-time job that you can have. I mean, I made that, uh, what was it, episode number seven? I put it on a suit and tie for you. It looked all good. I told you about making poker uh, a business. How, how do you make it a job? It is a part-time job and you can work when you want to and you'll make more than you will if you have to go to a part-time job where you have to be there for a guaranteed 20 hours just to make your $12 an hour. You can make 90 bucks an hour if you get in, get out, snipe, four hours. You know, I'm averaging almost 300 bucks every time I go. I mean, where else am I going to do that for four hours? Nowhere. Take advantage of it. I've got the game. I'll give you the skills. We'll play together. Um, my launch pad tournament's coming up soon. Secure in the venue. We'll get you on the right path. But apart from that, you need to you need to start making this part-time money now. It's going to get more expensive. Everything is. And we need to set an example. If you want to fight for poker, set an example. Get the ball rolling right now. All right. I'm headed to the casino. I'm pissed off. I'm taking my $200. That's it. I have 1157 in the bank. I have four wins, two losses, zero draws. And obviously I can't control things, but you know what? I'm not losing tonight. I need to make more money. I'm getting a house. Things are getting crazy expensive. I got a wedding coming up. I can't afford to lose. I'm not going to touch the money and put it into those things, but I can't lose. You need to have that mind frame too. Let's go. dollars in eight hours man last night sucked dude i played uh, i got there around like right before 9 p.m and there's a huge wait list and they called a new table and i was like oh i left my water bottle in the car ran back and got it and then i missed it so i had to wait again i was like oh this sucks uh, and I sat on a decent table. As soon as I sat down, I got a straight, and this guy bet hard into me. So I already made like hundred and forty dollars, like within five minutes of sitting there. And I was like, "Damn, I should go find a new table to play. <laughs> Just take the cash." But I didn't do it, and I ended up like getting all the way down to like ninety-seven dollars before I even came back, and I got back up to like a hundred and seventeen bucks, I think, on top of my two hundred dollar buy-in, and then uh. I got down to a hundred and the table broke. As soon as I was putting my uh, my blind out, the table broke and there were like five people and they're like, we don't want to play five. And the guy on, on next to me is like, oh, I'm out of here. And I was like, yeah, me too. It's five in the morning. Man, I made a hundred bucks in eight hours. That really sucks. I'm just glad I got the win. I was about to get a loss the whole time. Uh, I got to hang out with Cena most of the night, the night though. That was pretty cool. She was playing two five. She was killing it. And uh, so she took her big old profit from over there and came and hung out with me at the beautiful one, two tables. And uh, yeah, so she did pretty good there. She made at least a double up there. 
So uh, we had two grinders at the table and uh, kind of bounced some stuff off each other. And then we, I switched chairs again and we were kind of across the table. So kind of feeling out how to, how to run the table. Um, but yeah, man, I am so tired. That was real. I shouldn't have played that long. I should have gone to a new table, but I was so dedicated. The table wasn't like really hard players and there was a decent amount of action, but I'm just not getting uh, the cards that are connecting that well right now. It wasn't a bad night. It wasn't a good night. It was just very average, very mediocre. And, uh, you know, I got to give a shout out to, uh, to Jason Lopez. I don't know if you're watching this or not, but, um, the not eating thing before you go to play, like that's one of my big rules also. And I know that's kind of what you preach on your channel, but dude, it's like, it's a real thing. I, uh, I went and had dinner with my girl before I went and, uh, it gives you brain fog. Like I went there and I was like, I was, I was already in the zone, but after the course of time, even after the coffee I'd had, you could just tell, like, there's like a certain satisfaction that you get after you eat. When you go and play the hunger, the hunger's not there. You need to be hungry when you go play. Like I tell this to my girl too. Like, I don't like, uh, I don't really want to go eat dinner or anything before I go play. When I there, when I'm there, I'm hungry. Cause then I'll just like, you'll be a savage on the table. But if you go after you've eaten and you're full, it's like, I, I'm serious. There's something to it. I mean, the cards still have to work out, but there's a psychological thing to it. So yeah, I'm going to go again tonight and I'm not going to eat this time. I'm going to go a little hungry. I have some pretty good brunch or something, but yeah. Play till 5 a.m. Hey, I secured a win barely by $1. I mean, literally I was about to put my blind out and that would have made me go to a draw because it has to be within a hundred bucks. So I secured the W by a $1. So yeah, all right, win five, lost two, draw zero, bank rolls, $1,257. At least we went up, whatever. All right, yeah, I ranted enough at the beginning of this episode. I'm not going to hold y'all up. We'll get to the next one. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Grinders Challenge. Please join the Grinders Challenge. Don't take nights like tonight to be your inspiration. I shouldn't be playing this long or that late anyway. I just... I don't know. It just feels good. It's kind of fun to be there, you know? All right, guys. Uh, Grinders gear is coming up, too. Uh, pick whatever color hoodie you want. If you want to do a hoodie hat combo, I'll make a even more badass deal than this. Literally one-time fire sale. That's it. It's going to be expensive from here on out. This is your opportunity just to support it. So hit me up. All right, guys. Grinders challenge episode number nine in the books. Episode number 10 coming up next. See you guys.